What's happening, everybody? On today's show, bowl season is set. We'll run through all 11 SEC teams with bids and where they're going bowling. Also, we'll get you caught up going around the conference as a big-name quarterback is coming back for next year. And some notes from Georgia as they win the SEC championship game over LSU. Why Stetson Bennett needs a Heisman invite. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Remember, Locked On SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. Well, let's jump into it as bowl season is set. We now know where all the SEC teams with bids are going bowling. As we know, Auburn, Vanderbilt, Texas A&M, they are not going bowling. But let's run through the ones that are set first up. It'll be the Florida Gators heading out to Las Vegas to play in the Las Vegas Bowl against Oregon State. That'll happen on December 17th. Now, Napier and the staff, you know, you get 15 bowl practices or extra practices for bowl season. I don't know if they're even going to be able to get all those in because the Las Vegas Bowl is set to be played in, I mean, that's less than two weeks. That's a week from this Saturday. So, they're going to have to move quick. It's also the final weekend before the early signing period. So Florida going to have to be killing a lot of birds with two birds and one stone before they head out to uh, Las Vegas. Now the Gators did go six and six in Billy Napier's first season. They're going to look to snap a two game losing streak after they lost to Vanderbilt and Florida State to end out the season. Oregon State, they're a scrappy, hungry team. They rank number 14 in the final college football playoff poll. They went 9-3 and three in the regular season, so that's a good team. The big question, will Anthony Richardson play? I think a lot of people are expecting uh, if he goes pro, uh, he will forego that bowl game and uh, start preparing for the NFL draft. So expect to hear a decision on that very soon. Uh, if you're listening to this, he may have made one already, but uh, we'll see. Expect a decision very soon on Anthony Richardson and his future and whether or not he's going to stay or go. And be staying will he play in the las vegas bowl we will see uh next up eli drinkwitz missouri tigers they're heading to tampa to play wake forest in the gasparilla bowl that'll be on december 23rd so that's two weeks from this friday uh game will be played at raymond james stadium that's where the buccaneers play mizzou secured bowl eligibility with a six and six finish uh beating arkansas in the battle line rivalry game Wake Forest, their opponent, they dropped four of their last five games to finish seven and five. So they started real hot earlier in the year, and they stumbled down the stretch. Mizzou looking for their first bowl victory in the Eli Drinkwitz tenure. There was a report that came out on Friday that Mizzou refused to play Kansas in a bowl game. So uh, it sounded like a Mizzou-Kansas bowl matchup was possible. And uh, whatever happened there, Missouri fought it, said, no, we're not interested, whatever. That's not going to happen. But they will play Arkansas. Arkansas learned their bowl assignment, and the Razorbacks will head to Memphis to play in the Liberty Bowl against the Kansas Jayhawks. So two 6-6 six and six teams. Kansas uh, really uh, coming out of the gate strong earlier in the year, but uh, sputtered down the stretch. That game will be Wednesday, December 28th at 4.30 Central. We'll air on ESPN. It'll be just the third meeting between the two schools, the first since 1906. So Arkansas versus Kansas. I know Sam Pittman really wants to uh, finish the season strong. And some good news for him, we'll get into a little bit later, as uh, K.J. Jefferson announced, he is coming back for next season. Ole Miss, they're going to play in this year's Texas Bowl. That'll be played on December 28th at 8 p.m. Central in Houston. Well, of course, we'll give you more info on that a little bit later. But they will take on Texas Tech. The Rebels are looking to end the season on a positive note. We know they opened the year 7-0, and but won just one of their last five games down the stretch to finish 8-4. and uh, Kiffin has taken Ole Miss to bowl games in all three seasons as head coach there. Texas Tech, they come into the game 7-5. and They finished the regular season on a three-game win streak. They just beat Oklahoma. So uh, Texas Tech, a very good team. It's not going to be an easy matchup for Ole Miss, but it's going to be a good one. Uh, South Carolina Gamecocks. 
They were one of the hottest teams down the stretch with uh, wins over Tennessee and Clemson. They will play Notre Dame in uh, the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. That will kick off 3.30 Eastern on December 30th in Jacksonville. Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks, obviously they won the Dukes Mayo Bowl last year. Want to keep their uh, bowl win streak going here. And uh, teams, both of them did play Clemson, who they both beat. But uh, Notre Dame, a lot of bowl bowl games so we're trying to vie for them a very sexy Notre Dame team and that's a heck of a matchup for South Carolina Shane Beamer and company they're going to get everything they want uh Spencer Rattler still waiting to find a an, an official decision on his future there's been some reports saying that he was maybe leaning going pro after his wins in the uh against Tennessee and, and Clemson so we'll see what happens on that but uh, Gamecocks, Gamecocks are going to need Spencer Rattler in that one if he's sticking around to uh, to play and beat Notre Dame. Uh, Kentucky Wildcats, they will take on Iowa in the Music City Bowl. So they head to their seventh consecutive bowl game. And it's a rematch. It marks the first time in school history that Kentucky will play the same bowl opponent in back-to-back seasons. The Wildcats beat the Hawkeyes 20-17 to in the Citrus Bowl last year as they recorded their second 10-win season in four years. But uh, Kentucky versus Iowa, tough part for Wildcat fans. It's being played at the exact same time as Kentucky-Louisville in basketball. So you kind of have to pick your loyalty there. Do you want to watch the football team? Do you want to watch the basketball team? Uh, tough, tough go for uh, both fan bases, or uh, for the fan base having to split duties like that. Uh, Mississippi State Bulldogs, they were named to the ReliaQuest Bowl. It's the artist formerly known as the Outback Bowl. That will... Uh, they will take on the Illinois Fighting Illini. This is the 13th consecutive year that Mississippi State will go to a bowl game, so very cool stuff there. But Mike Leach will go up against former Arkansas head coach Brett Bielema, who had a nice year over at Illinois. Will Rogers, see how many yards he can throw for against a very good defense. So Illinois has had one of the better defenses throughout this season. Been ranked up there with Georgia in a lot of statistical categories. Tennessee, they're going to take on Clemson in the Orange Bowl. So that is a uh, very big honor for them to go to a New Year's Six Bowl. And going to be a lot of orange everywhere. It's already the Orange Bowl. And then you get Clemson and Tennessee both wearing orange. It'll be a lot of orange and white. Josh Heupel, he has the Vols at 10-2 and two in year two, despite not having quarterback Hendon Hooker. They're going to look for their 11th win of the season. Clemson, they finished 11-2 and two and just won the ACC title game in convincing fashion over North Carolina. LSU, they're going to look for their 10th win of the season in year one of Brian Kelly as they're heading to the Citrus Bowl to face Purdue. Both teams looking to bounce back from losses in their conference championship games. LSU fell to number one Georgia. Uh, Boilermakers fell to Michigan. For LSU, it's an unfamiliar opponent. Um, don't play. Uh, they've never played Purdue before in football. But for LSU, this will be their third postseason trip to Orlando since 2016. Brian Kelly's squad. Uh, will return to Camp- Camping World Stadium to open next season against Florida State. So get used to uh, this venue, LSU fans. That Citrus Bowl will be January 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Ironically, last time LSU went to the Citrus Bowl, they lost to Notre Dame and Ryan Kelly, now their head coach. The uh, other New Year's Six Bowl, he said Tennessee's playing Clemson. Uh, Nick Saban's Alabama squad, they're going to the Sugar Bowl as the top-ranked SEC team outside the playoff field take on Kansas State. One of the biggest questions is what star players will play. Nick Saban said he has not spoken to Bryce Young or Will Anderson in regards to their bowl game plans. said, quote, they participated in the workouts that we had last week. We'll get an opportunity to talk to them at some point this week. A lot of people thinking both Bryce Young and Will Anderson going to opt out and go start preparing for the NFL draft. So we'll see what happens there. And lastly, Georgia, of course, Kirby Smart, the Bulldogs, enter the college football playoff as the number one seed. They will uh, take on Ohio State. Last year in the playoffs, they beat Michigan in the semis, and now another Big Ten team awaits them. Kirby said, we can't play the defense we played in the uh, SEC championship and expect to be any kind of champions, semifinal or national championship. Got some work to do. Our guys, I know, will be excited to get back to work. And there you have it. Those are the bowl game assignments for all of the SEC squads. There's some really good games in there, uh, but the biggest one, of course, Georgia the lone representative from the SEC to make the playoff. There were some people thinking maybe Alabama could get in there. We'll tell you what Paul Feinbaum had to say about that in just a second. But thank you guys again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. 
And this episode is brought to you by our friends over at Omaha Steaks. As we start to get ready for the holiday season and you start to try to figure out what should you get your uncle or your dad or your cousin or your aunt or your girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever it is, Omaha Steaks has got it covered for you. They are America's original butcher since 1917 and a holiday gift that is guaranteed to be loved. The quality, convenience, and everything you need to deliver an unforgettable holiday gift experience. The holidays are here and achieving gifting greatness when you give the gift of perfectly aged, tender, and delicious Omaha steaks. There's nothing like it. We had them a couple weeks ago, fired up the grill. The 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 boxes come so easy. You get the steaks. You get the uh, loaded baked potatoes in there. Uh, you can pick and choose what you want. They got great burgers. We did those last weekend. They got chicken. They even have apple tartlets. They've got all kinds of stuff you can choose from. And the steak experts at Omaha Steaks have put together a special curated gift package to help take the guesswork out of gifting and make you a holiday hero. Just go to omahasteaks.com. Use our code Locked On at checkout. That's going to get you $30 off your order. Again, the most delicious uh, butcher's cut filet mignon you will ever taste. And even you can't mess uh, mess this up. I'm telling you, you, they give you the seasoning. You just sprinkle it on there. You put it on the grill. You, you keep it on for a while. You flip it over. That's it. It's the easiest thing to make out there. No uh, special things you need to do to it. Omaha Steaks, they're ready to ship your order right away. So shop early. Beat the shipping rush. Go to omahasteaks.com. Use our promo code Locked On at check, checkout. Again, visit omahasteaks.com. Use promo code Locked On at checkout to get that extra $30 off your order. Right along here, locked on SEC, and we've got so much still to cover here. So, uh, without further ado, we ran through the bowl games. We're going to get to the SEC championship in just a little bit, but lo- let's jump into it. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Oh. Makes the handoff. Around the conference. And we start with we discussed Georgia's in the playoff, Alabama on the outside looking in. Coming in at number five in the final college football playoff committees, Boo Corrigan joined ESPN's Reese Davis on Sunday afternoon and said it was one of the larger debates around the college football playoff. He, he uh, appeared to agree with a consensus among college football fans that Alabama's best wins still fell short of Ohio State's resume. He said, look, I think you look at the big wins as well as part of this and the win Ohio State has over Notre Dame in week one, the win they have over Penn State, Compare that to Alabama with the wins over Texas and Mississippi State, played in some other close games. We looked at the total body of work, and we had the committee uh, was comfortable with Ohio State at four and Alabama at five. So your top six of the final playoff ranking was Georgia, one, Michigan, two, TCU, three, Ohio State, four, Alabama, five, and Tennessee, six. A lot of Alabama fans upset because Ohio State, obviously, the last time they were on the field, they got obliterated at home by Michigan. Uh, in that last regular season game. And so a lot of people feel like, you know, even a two-loss Bama team should get in over a one-loss Ohio State team because Bama's both losses were close. They lost on a, you know, Will Reichard misses the field goal and the final minute against Tennessee. Tennessee responds, answers, goes down, kicks a game-winning field goal. They win that one. And then down to Death Valley, uh, go to overtime with LSU. LSU scores a touchdown. They decide to go for two in the win. They get it. That quick. Alabama's perfect season, uh, they get two losses on their resume with two close losses. Uh, I think you still have to look at it, though, and say they were losses. So Ohio State has the one loss. Paul Feinbaum, he was on Sports Center on Sunday morning, and he was getting into Nick Saban. He said, look, Nick Saban had some interesting arguments where he went on Fox on, on Saturday night and said, uh, you know, think of uh, the Vegas odds if we were playing on a neutral field. We'd be the favorite team over TCU, over Ohio State, over just about anybody from down in those rankings. And Paul Feinbaum said, it's an interesting ar- argument. It's not a winning argument. He said his argument and his campaign are as inconsistent as his football team was this year. They just simply don't fly. And as far as being favored in every game, that's great. Nick Saban's always favored. He's only been the other do- underdog once in 15 years. Does that mean Nick Saban should have 15 national championships at Alabama instead of six? That's not how this is done. And that's why Nick Saban is disappointed. And again, it's uh, you get the argument. Um, there's a case to be made there. But uh, ultimately, if Alabama just took care of business in one of those games, they would have been in. 
Um, you know, even if LSU had not lost another game and Bama had, wasn't playing for the SEC title game, they would have gotten in because, you know, the one loss uh, SEC team. And the same goes for Tennessee as well. If Tennessee doesn't get obliterated by South Carolina on the backstretch of the season. They take care of business. Tennessee would have been in. Speaking of Tennessee, they're going to have a coaching position uh, to replace. Alex Golish, their offensive coordinator, a key piece of their resurgence under Josh Heupel. He's a finalist for the Broyles Award this year, uh, given out to the top assistant coach in the nation. But he will be a head coach starting now. On Sunday, the uh, South Florida Bulls officially announced Golish as their new head coach, replacing Jeff Scott. Golish, 38 years old, spent time on Matt Campbell staff at Iowa State before joining Josh Heupel at UCF and then following him to Tennessee. Reports say Golish is not going to stay around for the bowl game. He will go get started immediately as head coach at USF. Uh, Josh Heupel on Sunday talked about filling the spot of Golish. He said, look, losing Alex is something we're excited about. I think it speaks to the growth inside of our program. For him to have his own opportunity to go run his own program, that's something we're all excited about for him. So Alex Golish, new head coach at USF. And uh, look, no Hendon Hooker and no Golish for the bowl game. What's that offense going to look like? Is Josh Heupel going to do uh, takeover play calling duties? Joe Milton at quarterback? We will see. All right, some good news for the Arkansas Razorbacks. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but this came out on Friday afternoon. K.J. Jefferson announced he's coming back for another season at Arkansas. He was eligible to enter the NFL draft, but he announced Friday he's opting to return for his redshirt senior season with the Razorbacks. He shared the news on social media, said, I want to thank God for directing me to Arkansas to start my college career. As for the Arkansas fans, I've always loved playing for you, and all the support you've given me is unmatched. With that said, it's time to fulfill my dreams. And my dreams would not be complete with about one more year on the hill. Go Hogs. KJ Jefferson, 68% completion percent uh, completion percentage this year, 2,300 yards, 22 touchdowns, four picks. Also ran for over 500 yards and seven touchdowns, rushing touchdowns. So uh, see if he can take his talents to the next level next year and make Arkansas contender in the SEC West in 2023. Several uh, Texas A&M players have already entered the transfer portal on Friday. Quarterback Haynes King joined those players. King was the Aggie season-opening starting quarterback each of the past two seasons. Nearly beat Alabama this year, but he will be on the move. Connor Wegman played very well down the stretch for the Aggies, so he appears to be the heir apparent, and Haynes King will be on the move. Some other notes going on around the conference. Mississippi State, they will lose a running back to the transfer portal uh, Katravion Bull Hargrove ended his second season with the program and out Saturday evening he is entering the portal he's a Louisiana native signed in the class of 2021 was the number 20 running back in that class and a four-star recruit meanwhile Gabriel Moore a three-star edge rushing prospect out of Mississippi he committed to Mississippi State over the weekend he's the number 20 prospect out of the state of Mississippi some good news for Eli Drinkwitz over at Mizzou. He picked up a commitment from four-star safety Marvin Burks, blue chip defensive back from the St. Louis area. He flipped his commitment from Ole Miss to Missouri. Uh, surprised a lot of recruiting experts when he chose Ole Miss back in October, but he has flipped now to Mizzou. He's now the highest rated defensive commitment of 16 pledges for Eli Drinkwitz 2023 class. And uh, for Auburn, some bad news for them. They suffered a decommitment from defensive lineman Jamarion Harkless, a three-star defensive lineman out of the state of Kentucky, the number 90 defensive lineman in the class of 2023. Uh, makes sense. A lot of the guys that were recruiting him were the previous staff at Auburn, and Hugh Freeze taking over. He'll build his own class here uh, ahead of the early signing period. And there you have it. That is the latest news going on around the conference. When we return, we'll get to some news and notes from the SEC Championship as – I think Stetson Bennett needs to be in New York for the Heisman Trophy Ceremony. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, this episode is brought to you by our friends at Simply Safe at Locked On SEC. We believe the home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system. That's Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering our listeners 40% off a new security system. You don't want to put this off. Great reasons to love it. Uh, they were named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report. That's a third year in a row. Uh, in any emergency, 
Professional monitoring agents use their fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that a threat is real. So you can get higher priority police response. It is tremendous. Their service costs under a dollar a day, less than half the price of traditional home security systems. Uh, and with their top rated app, you can stay in full control of your system, arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, whatever it is. Don't miss your chance to save big on our favorite security system. Get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. That's simply safe with an I slash locked on college. There's no safe like simply safe. This episode is also brought to you by our friends over at the Tax Act Texas Bowl. It is Houston's biggest college football event, and it is returning December 28th with the Tax Act Texas Bowl. Now we know who is playing. It is Ole Miss versus Texas Tech. So for any Rebel fans out there, don't miss your chance to be part of the passion, the pageantry, and the fun as the college football season draws to a close with conference bragging rights on the line. Tickets have gone on sale. You can uh, visit the website today and get your chance. Uh, uh, tickets and suites are on sale now. Ticketmaster and attacks at TexasBowl.com. Tailgating, live music, great food and drinks, and the spirit and energy that make college football so much fun. It'll be a full display December 28th in prime time at NRG Stadium again. Don't miss your chance to go out and see the Rebels taking on the, the Red Raiders, Ole Miss versus Texas Tech, taxacttexasbowl.com. For all the details and get your tickets, that's taxacttexasbowl.com. All right, roll along here, locked on SEC. Man, it's uh, it was a fun game watching on Saturday night in the uh, SEC championship game as Georgia beat up on uh, LSU 50-30 to en route to Kirby Smart's second SEC championship title. He's been there five times. He's only won twice, and this was his second one, but congrats to Kirby Smart and Georgia as uh, they they got it done and there were some weird things that happened in this game but first I gotta give a shout out to Stetson Bennett who really just was tremendous in the game on Saturday His senior quarterback was 23 of 29 for 274 yards four touchdowns as Bennett became the oldest quarterback to win the SEC championship at 25 years old and it wasn't just his stats that impressed it was just his overall play command of the game He's been considered a Heisman Trophy contender uh, throughout his time there at Georgia, but his play on Saturday, I think, really turned some heads. RG3 took to Twitter on Saturday, called Bennett's outing the most Heisman-like performance of the weekend. Uh, Aaron Murray, the former Georgia quarterback, he tweeted, not only is Stetson Bennett going to New York City, he has moved into GOAT status at Georgia. He is the greatest quarterback in Georgia football history. For the year, Bennett has 3,400 yards, 20 touchdowns, just six picks. He also has seven rushing touchdowns, uh, leading the number one team in the country. And it's just been an outstanding year. And it was an outstanding cap to uh, a fantastic season as Georgia goes undefeated uh, at the championship podium after the game. Kirby Smart, very complimentary of Stetson and went on to say that the win was very satisfying for all the fans who stuck around the whole game, came to Atlanta, took over Atlanta. Talked to some friends who were there. They said, you know, typically when a team goes, like when LSU's been in the past, uh, I was there in 2019, you know, it was maybe a 60-40, maybe even more 50-50 in 2019. There was a lot of LSU fans there. But, you know, being right down the road from Athens, typically Georgia uh, represents well. They said it was more 90-10 this time around. I mean, LSU fans just, after the lost a and they just felt like they had no chance in this one. And Georgia really took advantage early. Uh, Christopher Smith scooped up that blocked field goal attempt from LSU and returned it all the way down for a touchdown to put the Bulldogs up 7-0. Nazir Stackhouse got his hand on the ball. It was so funny, though. So many people didn't know the rule. Nobody knew it was a live ball. He thought, oh, block kick, that's it. All right. Uh, even Todd Munkin in the booth was shown on camera yelling, no, 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 don't touch it. Um, but kudos to Georgia and their players pick it up, returning it, getting on the board. Another highlight of the game, Jalen Carter, who's not been healthy uh, much this year, struggled with injury, but likely still to be a top five pick in the draft. Pit, in the draft, uh, in the second quarter, had one of the craziest sacks of the year, picked up Jaden Daniels, and with the whistle blew, held him up in one hand and one arm while he held up his other hand to put up the number one while still holding Jaden Daniels in the air. 
it was a, a crazy sight. And uh, again, congrats to Georgia. They went 50 to 30. Now, LSU had their moments uh, of, of positives in this one. Like I said, they had, they had the blocked field goal return for a touchdown. They had an interception that bounced off of Jack Besh's helmet and into the hands of a Georgia defender. Nothing you can do about that. Sometimes luck's just on the other team's side. But one bright spot was the backup quarterback, Garrett Nussmeyer, who came in for Jaden Daniels, who got injured and uh, played the entire second half. And Garrett Nussmeyer goes 15 of 27 for almost 300 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Uh, was not enough to help LSU come back from a 25-10 halftime deficit. But looks like they've got maybe got their guy of the future. We're going to see what happens with Jaden Daniels here. Some people were thinking maybe he might go test the NFL draft waters or whatever. But uh, Garrett Nussmeyer certainly looked apart like a gunslinger, letting it fly out there. And LSU's wide receiver certainly took advantage. Malik Neighbors, Kayshawn Booty, Booty, all those guys look good. And LSU did outscore Georgia in the second half, 20 to 15. But uh, of course, Georgia up 35 10 at halftime. Georgia scored those uh, 35 points in the first half that was tied for the most points in the first half in sec championship history so again congrats to the georgia bulldogs they get it done and um again maybe some questions about the leaky secondary there especially in that second half gonna have to take care of that to beat a good ohio state team but georgia just ran the ball as dominant as they always do that three-headed running attack is so so good and uh you know it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun to see what they do Game plan wise to get ready for Ohio State. One more note uh, coming out of the weekend. Greg Sankey speaking with the media on Friday at the SEC championship game. He did confirm uh, that a decision on a nine game SEC schedule uh, may not come until later next year and confirmed that there's just a date of uncertainty remaining on when Texas and Oklahoma are going to join the conference. We know the schedule's already set for next year, so nothing's going to happen next year, but you got to get the ball rolling, right? You got to start to figure all this out and who's going to play who and you know how are you going to do all this so uh but greg thank you said nothing's going to be announced anytime soon sounds like they will take their time and so anyway college football playoff set georgia number one michigan two ohio state uh, or tcu three ohio state four. So georgia versus ohio state on new year's eve that is coming up in the chick-fil-a peach bowl and i know georgia they well represented against lsu in the sec title game got a feeling they're going to be well represented against ohio state in that one so congrats to them help us georgia you are our only hope for the sec to try to win a, yet another national championship thank you guys again for making locked on sec your first listen for your next listen go check out locked on sports today podcast the biggest stories of the day plus instant reactions big game recaps and the take of the day available on the odyssey app youtube or wherever you get your podcast i'm chris gordy thank you guys so much for watching and listening subscribe if you haven't already on youtube and, of course, wherever you get your podcasts. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Talking all things SEC right here on Locked on SEC.